religions. So it's not just that you didn't provide a reason to believe you, it's that you've presented me with a whole bunch of reasons not to. So are you looking at it from a moral standpoint then? I would, that was one of my many standpoints, yes. Right, so my, I'll tell you, I can, I'll give you the only plausible answer that I can give you as a Christian. Okay. And that is that the majority of the Christian world has not understood what we call the character of God. So, with, so you're with, basically saying that, that the majority of Christians aren't really Christians, and so you don't have to take the blame, or, or they, they're not representative of true Christianity. It gets better than that. They're He's not, saying that his anything. God failed at communication on the most important message that he was supposed to impart to everyone. Let me, let me ask you this, Stefan. What do you believe about the Bible? Do you believe that the Bible is an accurate representation of what God thinks? Absolutely. Okay, so you think slavery is moral? No, but God did not, um, as you say, endorse that. But God yes, did yes, endorse that. Yes, he absolutely that. did. did you, have you not read your Bible? Ex have, Exodus chapter 21? So what you have done is read your Exodus Bible. Exodus 31. Oh, right. What you have done is read your Bible, but the Bible says that you have to study it. There's a difference. No, 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 no. No, Stefan. I don't have to study it. When Exodus 21 specifically tells people who they can own, how much they can pay for them, and that these are their, and then in Deuteronomy it points out that these are their property which they can pass on to another person. There is no matter of interpretation there. The Bible endorses slavery. It explicitly endorses the owning of another human being as property to be, to be passed on. That is explicit. If you would read carefully. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> Stephen. The civil law and not the moral law of God. No, 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 Stephen. Stefan, does the Bible not say what I just said it says? Yes, it does, but I'm saying... Yes, it does. Context, I'm from principle. There is no context. There is no context at all in which owning another human being is morally correct. Are you saying that there is? Let, let, let's, let's be straight here. We have both the Old Testament and the New Testament reaffirm that slavery is okay, that it is permitted. Now, are you saying it's out of context? Show me where is the context. Where does the Bible say what we just said over here uh, in Deuteronomy and in Exodus 21 and in Exodus 31 and over here in the New Testament too? Where does it say that, that we were just kidding and it's not okay to own slaves? Where does right. the Bible say that it is not okay? Right. Earlier within the laws of Exodus and Leviticus, it was stated that there are two different laws. There is the moral law and there is the civil law. The moral law belongs to God. The civil law was established by Moses, which was written in the books next to the Ten Commandments of God. But so those civil laws were said that those were... Wait, who wrote the book? Who wrote the moral law? The moral law was written by God himself, according to Mo in Exodus 20. But According it, to who? According to Exodus 20. Okay, and who wrote Exodus 20? Exodus 20 is written by Moses. By Moses. Moses being the same guy who promoted... The molestation of preteen children in Exodus 31? The, the guy who insisted that his followers kill women and children and keep the preteen virgins as slaves for themselves? Well, are we talking about the same guy? Are you, do you realize that the same God realized that this is what Israel was doing? Can you answer that question with a yes or a no? Stefan, Stephen, what you don't seem to get is I don't give a rat's ass what Israel was doing or what Moses sanctioned. I asked you about the Bible the Bible that you think is the Word of God, that clearly states that it's okay to own another human being as property. Now, where in the Bible does it say, thou shalt not own another human being? All right, let, let me show you that, that in slavery was in no way endorsed by God. You remember You're that? a liar. Yeah, well, I agree. <laughs> I agree that it wasn't endorsed by God because there wasn't a God. If you're not going to answer the questions, we're done. Okay, you, but it, but it definitely was endorsed by the Bible again and again and again. We've given you chapter and verse. And, and you've agreed that it's there. And all you can do is say, well, you know, that's what Israel did. Or let me assure you that I don't want your assurance. I, what I want you to do is be honest about what you believe. Yeah, and um, the next time you want to ask this question, I have my question back to you. Can you give me a reason to believe what you do? And just answer that question with a yes or a no. And if you don't have a reason, we don't have a conversation. When you have a reason, be prepared to give it, and then I'll be prepared to consider it. Yeah. When, when you start making excuses for atrocities, you have removed yourself from any valid discussion on morals. When you say, yes, the Bible says you can own slaves, but 
Well, now you're contradicting yourself because before, one of the first question I asked you is whether or not you thought the Bible accurately represented the mind of God, the will of God. Um, you, you've got this conflicted mess of contradictions and you found a way to rationalize them. You've gone and looked at that and said, boy, that really sounds bad, but that's what Israel was doing. That's not what God wanted. But I want to... Well, wanna... let, me, let, me, let me ask this, just, even though you're not on the line, you can think about this, and that is, you believe that there's an all-powerful, all-knowing, loving God who has an important message for humanity, and he is so completely inept that his best attempts at, communicate, uh, at communicating to people manage to convey the exact opposite message of what you think he meant. Now, are you actually, did, are you like the one who got it right? and all these people who authored the holy book that got you started managed to get it wrong? Is your God such a bumbling buffoon that he simply cannot say something as simple as thou shalt not own another human being or please don't rape and kill your, the, the people in villages around you? And he managed to communicate, communicate so poorly that it got written down as thou shalt be able to own another human being as property and oh by the way, go over there and kill everybody and kill everything except for the young virgins? It's asinine. You cannot reconcile this. And it, it is in, incredibly infuriate, infuriating to ask questions for which we already know the answer, to have you admit honestly that yes, it says this, and then go on to make excuses for it just a second or two after saying you believe that the book represents what God wants. Well, I agree with you. Well, uh, God didn't say that. Okay, it, God is all-knowing, okay, and he knows the future of all events, yet he wrote a book that can only be interpreted as, as if it endorses slavery and, and heinous violence against women, against children, against your neighbors. Uh, it, how, how could your God be that omnipotent and devise a book where we can't distinguish between the law of Israel and God's law? I mean, they're interwoven, where we have metaphor and fact, and nobody can distinguish the two. We don't know what is what we're supposed to take literally, what we're supposed to take figuratively. Was it actually a tree? I mean, come on. We, we can't distinguish this. It doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't matter how it's translated, and it doesn't matter what version. But if it was written by an omnipotent being, there would be one version. And there would only be one way to interpret it, because it would be written well. Actually, it wouldn't be written at all. What's wrong with your God just actually coming down and talking to people? Why can't he just say, hey, um, you know that stuff that's in the book? <laughs> uh, some of it's not quite right, and I'm here to actually correct it. Yeah, Shem and Hebab brought that, and they were drunk at that time. But let me get it straight. Yeah. What, what, you, what you've done is when you say, oh, no, no, if you need to go read and study the Bible, um, some of us have actually done that, and it's one of the reasons that we're atheists. Uh, it's a primary reason. Some of us actually read it and studied it in detail. What you've done is not read and studied the Bible. You've read a passage, and then you've gone out and found apologists who have given you excuses in order to rationalize it. The fact of the matter is, the book says X, and I don't care how you read it or what you read <laughs> into it, you can't make it say not X. And every time you attempt to do so, you represent that you are dishonest, you are not interested in actual dialogue, you're here to preach. This is my show, and you don't get to preach on my show. And Sorry. by the way, we've already given him too much time. Yeah, way too much. We